The opinions and interpretations expressed in this and other videos are that of Marty Huey and may not be representative of his colleagues and employer. The videos cover overlapping requirements of codes, standards, and regulations. Your situation will require full analysis beyond the concepts presented here. This video is on some design stair minimums, assuming a fully sprinkled building, rectangle stairs, and not residential, i.e. not R1, R2, or R3. One of the first parameters we need to be aware of is our vertical height of a stair cannot be greater than 12 feet without first reaching a floor or a landing. How to measure our stair width required, our exit inches. That is measured from inside a stringer to inside a stringer on a fully sprinkled building. Keep in mind, on a non-sprinkled building, it's measured from inside of handrail to inside of handrail. Our standard width of a stair is 48 inches. If the stair is serving 50 people or less, then that width could go down to 36 inches. But be very careful about that. Look at previous videos to understand rationale about making it or keeping it at 48. Next is understanding minimum height or head knocking height within a stair, and that is 80 inches. And that is measured from the vertical element down to the step that it occurs on. Look at these two examples, and if you have questions, please ask. I'll be more than happy to elaborate. Now to understand the actual steps themselves. Our maximum height of any step is seven inches. The minimum is four inches. Every step will have a nosing measuring not greater than one and a quarter inches. Each step cannot be less than 11 inches. That 11 inches is measured from nosing to nosing, not counting the one and a quarter inches. It can be greater, but it cannot be less than 11. Now our construction or built tolerance. No step for the entire run of a stair. That means from one landing to the next landing cannot have a dimensional difference of greater than three eighths of an inch and no step between one step and the next step can have a, a tolerance greater than 3 sixteenths of an inch. That's in both height and the step itself, the tread. Now this is addressing a straight run of a stair only. On a straight run of a stair, your max landing is required to be only 48 inches. So therefore, if your width of your stair is 48, your max landing has to be 48. If your width of your stair is 52, you're still only required to have a max length of a landing of 48 inches. Now to address a switchback. Where we have a switchback, the landing, the minimum distance of a landing, must be the same minimum distance required by the stair. Pay particular attention to the nosing at landings. Measured from this location of the nosing at the landing to the side or other side of the stair landing must measure the same distance as the tread width itself. Door swings. Measuring from the door swing area itself to the nosing or floor area cannot be less than one half the required width of the stair. So we take the required width of the stair, in most cases it's 48 inches. Divide that by two, we get 24. So this clearance must be a minimum of 24 inches or one half the required width of the stair. Now for the door. When the door is in its fully open position, measuring from the wall to the outside edge of the door, it cannot be greater than seven inches. Please post or email comments on what you've seen. Suggestions for future topics are also welcome. Marty enjoys learning from the experience of others. More videos will be added, which can be found at MartyHuey.com.